My name is Joe Good. I'm running for city council in the city of Charleston, District 6, which is, uh, I obviously live in District 6. So. Where do you live? I uh, live on Alberta Avenue. And oh, so that's about as District 6. Now, District 6 has expanded now, right, to Gentile? It has. It's, it's kind of a funny district. It, it is it's drawn very oddly, but it starts around MUSC on, on B Street and stretches up. Um, up into Wagner Terrace, uh, the majority of, um, of the left side of the Upper Peninsula on Ashley, and goes up through Longborough neighborhood and then into uh, Lowndes Point. And then it jumps over the Ashley Bridge, over the James Island Connector, onto Folly, um, Folly Road, the right side of Folly Road on James Island, and the Marlboro neighborhood, and the Cross Creek neighborhood, and then jumps back over Folly Road, and the Winchester neighborhood. So it's a bunch of these neighborhoods on on the, mostly on the right side of Folly Road and a little bit on the left side down um, Folly Road. So, so this is redrawn. This is one of these redrawn districts. It's been redrawn um, in the last couple of years, and this is the first election that we've had since it's been redrawn. I see. So Dudley Gregory was um, elected in the old districts. So. Correct. He was elected out of the old uh, districtings, and now that they've redrawn it, um, well. What has possessed you to do this? I mean, Dudley Gregory is a, is a force. He's got an organization. He ran for mayor. He still has that organization intact, I believe. Well, now that they've redrawn the district and included a, a great deal of James Island, um, I can tell you, as somebody who's grown up in Charleston and grown up um, on the peninsula and been riding my bike around Charleston my whole life and played community football and came up through high school in Charleston and... and and my parents uh, now live on James Island, so I've, I've got ties to both communities and uh, you know, I still live on the peninsula. And as somebody who's grown up here, I, I've always wanted to be more part of the community. And as with anything, timing is, is everything. In this race, in, um, in the city council race, the timing I thought was perfect for me to get involved. I saw an opportunity and I took it, mainly because of the district has been redrawn and included a major part of James Island and then my neighborhood as well. And it was a perfect opportunity for me to say, I think it's time for a fresh start, a fresh look from somebody on city council to look at these issues that we keep dealing with over and over. The flooding I keep hearing about, more community programs for the youth, um, those kinds of things. And there are a lot of different ordinances on the table that I'd like to be involved in. There are a lot of new developments on the, in the city that I want to be involved in, like the Horizon development and all these uh, sustainability efforts and economic development on the Upper Peninsula on Morrison Drive. All these things I want to be involved with, and, and now is a perfect time for that to happen because they've redrawn my district and give me the opportunity um, to put my name on the ballot and hope that the residents of, these, of District 6 will elect me and give me that opportunity. Well, what about those who would say that, um, you know, you're fighting a very strong incumbent? I mean, Dudley Gregory, as I said, I don't want to belabor the point, but he does have a very strong organization. How can you overcome that? I mean, um, we'll never underestimate the underdog. Uh, we have a very strong organization as well, and I've been talking to a lot of people in the community and attending a lot of meetings and speaking to lots of groups, and. People are ready for a fresh start. They're also ready to be able to relate to their city councilman in that they want to be able to reach out to their city councilman, know who their city councilman is. Councilman is. I'd like to have... Are you saying they don't now? I talk to a lot of people who don't know who their city councilman is, and not just that they don't know, but a lot of them are apathetic to, the, to, to city government. They don't care as much. However, they'll still complain about issues within the city. Like when it rains too hard and half of the DMV parking lot is flooded, which happened last week. And I was over there because I'm in city court every week doing work. Um, so it always bothers me when it rains and I have, and there's nowhere to park. Literally, it's a huge problem. And, and um, so people are affected by, by issues in city government and they complain about them, but they don't care so much about the process of electing your councilman and who to voice your opinion to. I was just responding to an email yesterday, randomly, um, that somebody asked me who to go to in the city about a certain issue because they know I do a lot of work with the city. And if people would care a little bit more and get a little bit more involved, um, then it would be so much better for our community. 
and I think the first step to doing that is having the leadership be, you have to have somebody lead you to, to, to care a little bit more and to, to show you how to network the channels of city government, who to go to in certain instances, in certain situations when you have issues. And I think the right city councilman that constantly, every good relationship starts with good communication. And having a good relationship with your city should start with your city councilman. But you have to have a city councilman that takes the bull by the horns and grabs the reins and, and tells those people that aren't the people that go to every HOA meeting every month. Because there are plenty of great people that do that. And I, I applaud those people because they take a lot of time to care about their community. Those people are great. If everybody was like that, that would be perf a perfect scenario. But it's not going to happen. So because that's not going to happen, you need people in city council, you need your city council member to reach out to those people that are not going to those HOA meetings, to reach out to those people and say, hey, we need to raise money for our community. We need you to help. Hey, we have these issues and I haven't heard from you to see how you feel about these issues. And I need to know because I'm not somebody sitting in city council making decisions that I think the community wants. I need to be sitting in city council making decisions that I know these people want. And it can't just be the 20 people at the HOA meeting every month. It needs to be these people that aren't coming to meetings that I don't hear from. And I got to go, if I got to knock on their doors, if I got to do an online platform, um, call them, whatever it takes to get their opinions, it would make my job so much easier to be able to sit in city hall and say, uh, I know 100% that I feel good about the way I'm voting on this shit issue or this proposed ordinance because I know that the constituents in my district, the residents in my district, this is the way they want me to vote. And because they want me to vote this way, even if other people don't um, necessarily approve of the way I'm voting, I'll feel good about it because that's the way my district wants me to vote. Well, one more question. I've been in a citywide race, and I'm here to tell you that apathy is just mine, I mean. Sure. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a cliche, every vote counts, but I'm telling you, in this race... It does. I mean, you're not talking a couple hundred, it could be ten votes. Could make that. So, um, how are you addressing that? Well, there was a city council in the last race that literally lost by 35 votes. I could go knock on 35 doors and drag those people to the polls. So that's scary because literally every vote counts. So hopefully everybody will get out and vote on November the 5th. Um, we, we're just we're trying to make sure that people are aware of the day when the election is. Tuesday, November 5th, there won't be a line in that to any of the polls. There just won't be. In the Senate race a few weeks ago, there was no lines, and I keep joking that it literally took me longer to pick up my uh, dry cleaning than it took me to vote. I walked in. I was the only person in the building voting in the Senate race. I showed my ID, signed the thing, voted. I was in and out like that. In this race, I can assure you it will be the same way, so it'll be quick. Um, but hopefully there will be many that will be voting. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you one minute to tell the world why you should be elected to city council. Starting now. Thank you, David. Um, I grew up in the city of Charleston. I care deeply about the city of Charleston. Everywhere I've ever traveled, I've always bragged that I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. I've always wanted to be part of this community. I've seen the issues since I was a little kid. I've always wanted to fight some of these issues that still haven't been completely solved. I remember paddling my surfboard up Ashley Avenue after a hard rain. That's a common tale in the city, trying to navigate the roads with the flooding. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many other issues. I want to make sure the people in my community know the issues and understand the issues because there's so many proposed ordinances that people just don't know about. And it'd be my job to get them that information so they know what's going on in city government and in, in city hall so they can inf make an informed decision and let me help uh, vote the right way for them.